Tears in your synthetic slings. Dog legs in your wire rope. A couple of homemade below the hook devices. Let's be honest, we've probably all seen these things. And possibly, but hopefully not, use them to make lifts. But what happens when that worn out, overloaded shackle finally gives up on you midway through a lift? This is the OSHA inspection series. And today we're covering rigging. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Kay. Today we'll be covering OSHA rigging inspections, rigging documentation and identification, training, and regular inspections of your rigging equipment. We sat down with Tom Horner, Mazella's corporate rigging inspection manager, who's been performing, coordinating, and managing rigging inspections for well over 20 years. Let's check out what he has to say. OSHA is the governing body to make sure that, you know, you as an organization are, are keeping your employees safe. Uh, OSHA 1910.184 uh, is where they reference slings. Um, however, OSHA is not known for writing standards. They write the law and then enforce it. That's the way we look at it. Um, so that's why we refer to everything ASME. ASME is the, the engineering body that has created all the standards across all the different types of items. Regular inspection uh, can cover up to seven different ASME standards. A lot of the time it starts off with just a conversation about slings, which is very general, but you also have to get into the rigging, which can be your shackles, your hoistrings, your lever tools all of the different items within those different uh, ASME standards. So basically with OSHA, what you're gonna have is enforcement of, you know, making sure the, the compliance is there, that you are performing the proper training and that you're also performing the proper inspections and keeping the documentation in place for those inspections. We start with the identification. Is the manufacturer's identification still in place? So when you're looking at an alloy chain sling, is its ID tag still there? Um, if not, it's an immediate failure. Nylon web slings, the, the same thing. Is their tag legible and in place? Wire rope sling legible and in place? Shackles, is it a domestically manufactured shackle? Does it have the proper ID or was it an import that could be lacking? When you get into lever tools and manual hoists, again, is its manufacturer's placard still in place with all the required information? And of course, across all the standards, there's different requirements for what has to be on the item and legible. If everything's in place, then you just start doing basically what we call a hand over hand, looking at every inch of whatever device we're looking for. So if it's an LA chain sling, we'll start at the top. If it's got a master link, make sure everything is not damaged, work through the coupling links, all the way down through each link of e on each leg of chain to the end fittings at the bottom, which are the various type of hooks. Nylon web slings, we're looking for chemical damage, burns, cuts, tears, abrasion, uh, punctures, stitching, um, same thing across round slings, and it just goes on through the different items we're looking at. So what we come in is we see the homemade stuff. Um, and sometimes people have the right intentions and believe that they've manufactured it the proper way, but was it manufactured to uh, BTH-1, which is the ASME standard of how to actually design and build and engineer your below the hook device. So that's even, you know, digs a little deeper is once you, you, you start showing the customer that, it just opens up this, this entire conversation of wow, you may have 20, 30, 40, 50 years of devices in your facility, are you gonna take everything and throw it out? Or are you gonna look at each one individually and decide how you can attack and implement you know, uh, each one to be designed, manufactured, tested, and then and then put into place. So probably the number one challenge that we see with our customers is that they've made them themselves. You can't inspect it because the very first time you're going to come up, you're going to see there's, there's no ID. Even if they put ID on it, is it the ID okay. that BTH-1 requires? And then when you understand BTH-1, you have to ask you know, the customer, if they built it, okay, do you have all your engineering prints in place? Do you have your load tests in place, the documentation? You know, did, did you do all the calculations to the new design factors and, and, and all those specifics? So it's really a complex conversation when we get there. And they're saying, well, we've been using it for 50 years. 
there's not been a problem. Whatever they're using that device for, they might have made a slight change of design. They just have their maintenance guy come in, chop something off, weld something new on, test it, and all of a sudden they've got something that they're using. Is there a better way to pick up what you're lifting and lift it from point A to point B? Are you only using it because that's just the way we've been doing it? If we can get somebody to understand we've always done it that way isn't a great answer, then you can start moving forward. Uh, we're going to jump right in and say, hey, you know, number one, you're inquiring. We want to start documenting all of our conversation because we might not be able to to, to jump in and get an actual inspection completed because there's a lot of you know research that has to be done. So you want to document that you're, you're taking all the steps to get to that place. Number two, you want to identify, okay, do you have training in place? Are your users trained? Do you have that program in place? Then when we get to the inspection, it's, okay, how big is your facility? How many items do you, do you have? We'll work with you to complete a front load sheet so we understand what we're up against. And then we can get in there, schedule a date and a time to get the inspection completed and get that documentation in place uh, because OSHA will be doing you know, follow-up to make sure that they've, they've uh, completed a completion of those citations. When we're working with a customer, we want to make sure that they understand um, the level of inspection we're going to perform for them and all of the different items we can inspect during a proper rigging inspection. You've got everything listed on a report so you understand what you're up against. Then they can back away from there. Okay, do we need all this stuff? You're going to just go one at a time. And again, just look at the entire sequence of operations from, you know, it, again, is this do we even need this? And just get it out of your facility if you don't. Looking for more info on slings? Check out our free online course for sling inspections. There, you'll learn best practices and info on inspection criteria for all types of slings, from synthetic to alloy chain. Plus, you can head over to our OSHA inspection series playlist to watch all the other episodes. All of those links are down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Once again, my name is Kay, and I'll see you later.